Hi. My name's John. Constantine, originally released in February of 2005 through developer Bits Studios and published by SCI Games, is a title that, well, seeing that it's a movie tie-in video game adaptation that actually dropped a mere four days before the film's theatrical release, already gets off to a bit of an awkward start. Because, as we all know, movie tie-in games have the best reputation. To be honest, Constantine is a game that is reasonably upfront with you from the very beginning. The first scene of the game is a straight up recreation of the beginning of the movie, with the developers doing everything in their power to match the film's visual style and colour palette, while also presenting what was clearly meant to be a sneaky mini trailer for the movie that was about to drop in a few days. And by that I mean this is really the only scene of the entire game that matches what actually happens in the film beat for beat. The rest of Constantine the video game plods forward with what can only be assumed were script and plot reference notes. The key elements are there, just in really flimsy or downright unrecognisable forms, and as a result there are a lot of moments throughout this game that, especially if you're playing it after you've seen the film, almost have this weirdly parallel yet confusingly distant similarity with the film, or in a nutshell, with all my stupidly over the top word usages thrown out the window, scenes that are close to what you got on the big screen, but are kept very much at arm's length to prevent major spoilers. Because of course, if you're going to release your movie tie-in game a few days early, you can't have it ruining the entire film and stopping potential ticket buyers from enjoying the latest Keanu Reeves blockbuster now, can we? No, 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 no. Gotta make sure we put bums in seats, quoth the Warner Bros executive producer. And by the way, if you're thinking, eh, three to four days isn't a lot of time to complete an entire game, wouldn't most players only get through around halfway before the theatrical launch anyway? Well. You would think that, except your average Constantine the video game runtime clocks in at around 4 to 6 hours, depending on player ability and a simple matter of free time. If I'd played this when I was a teenager, I don't think much would have stopped me from completing it in the space of a single evening. The game's standard difficulty isn't all that challenging, and I was a determined little shit of a video game junkie back then, so I really wouldn't have put it past me. Anyway, getting back to Sugar Hell, Demon Spice and everything nice, once you remove all expectation of how much this tie-in game is actually going to uh, tie in with the movie, where does that leave Constantine the video game? Or to put it bluntly, is this game any good? Well... It's alright? Now, don't get me wrong, in the world of games based on movies, Constantine is a long, long way away from how bad some can be. I'm still waiting on that $17.99 refund for Jumper Griffin's story that I demanded years back but somehow never received, the very same game that was once suggested to be buried alongside E.T. the Extraterrestrial in a scathing review from GameSpot. Bullshit. However, thankfully, Constantine is not that bad. In fact, this game can be a lot of fun. Fans of Devil May Cry might recall that the game's original design concept was going to be a lot less hack and slash and a lot more gunplay and demons initially. Capcom still had the monstrous success of Resident Evil in the back of their minds, and so when drafting the first DMC, from this concept out alone, it certainly looks a lot more like Resi with demons rather than what it would eventually become. And if you're wondering why I've brought this up, it's really because Constantine's gameplay is essentially a diluted version of what DMC could have been. John is offered a reasonably varied arsenal of firearms to keep his hellish distractions entertained, while also dabbling in spells and magic to boost his offensive or defensive capabilities. Kind of just like Dante. And while playing through the game, I just couldn't help thinking about how similarly Devil May Cry might have ended up playing or looking like this game, albeit with a fuckload more gothic architecture and silver hair. So to finally get into the gritty details of stepping into the shoes of John Constantine, it's quickly established that demons are breaking through the barrier between hell and earth, so I'm actually outright attacking John while on his way to media contact with some alarming information. 
He of course dispatches these while the player is throwing some tutorial bones, but the general point of the story is plenty monologued while this happens. Demons stepping into the world of the living constitutes as breaking the rules, as Father Hennessy unhappily puts it. So the mere fact that this is happening we are all gonna die. <laughs> pretty much equates to a real bad time for mankind, unless in time John can find a means to banish, beat or bind those that might want to eat a certain John Constant time. It's bad, okay? That's all you need to know. Your average player is here to kill demons and delight in a Keanu Reeves impersonator saying Keanu Reeves things while sending sentence puppies back to hell. And honestly, the actual act of doing so is plenty enjoyable. Possession is nine tenths of the law. If you want it, try and take it. As already mentioned, John's arsenal consists of some welcome variety that you gradually collect throughout the game, a set of Witch's Curse revolvers that pack plenty of punch, a fairly standard Purger crossbow that is expectedly slow to reload but at the same time compensates this with increased damage, the Dragon's Breath flamethrower, which is exactly what you expect it to be, a fucking flamethrower. Don't buy this flamethrower. Don't buy it. <laughs> then of course there is the fucking sweet holy shotgun that most fans of the movie are probably very keen to get their hands on. And it's effective enough, although it does feel a little bit piddly on occasion. Almost as if it needed that final boost of Divine Doomslayer. And lastly, you have the Crucifier, which is essentially a gas-powered nail gun on machine gun steroids that, so long as you remember to keep picking up the nails that you've just embedded into the skull of the nearest demon, basically grants unlimited ammo. I kid you not, once you have the thing, 90% of your enemies might as well throw themselves at your feet and weep. Because otherwise... <laughs> as for the collectible spells and magic, you're offered the odd assortment of sidearms such as holy water and a few other bits and pieces. And these are fine, but to be honest I pretty much forgot all about them for most of the game. Same with the castable spells actually, these mostly range from boosting your defense, nullifying enemy attacks or health, or just straight up turning them to stone, and although this might sound awesome, I mostly forgot about them too. Well, except for one. The Stormcrow spell. I won't lie, I blatantly overuse this ability, and as soon as you've raised the mana bar enough through collectible scrolls, some of which also increase your health bar instead by the way, you can then blast everything in sight with the might of Zeus, and then as soon as the demon spirit energy floats over to you and refills your mana bar back up, you can use it again virtually straight away. And yeah fine, maybe cheesing my way through a lot of this game with the spell is a bit of a cheap shot, but I'm sorry, if you give me the power of the lightning dude from Big Trouble Little China, what do you fucking expect me to do? So now that we've established Constantine's arsenal, what about the gameplay itself? Well, it's probably best summed up with one of my favourite descriptions of all time when it comes to games like this. Jank. This game is absolutely 100% bona fide janky. The gunplay is kind of horrendous and awkward, but it gets the job done. John waddles around like a dizzy penguin for most of the game while simultaneously dropping snarky, sarcastic comments about his surroundings with the reliable repetition of a metronome. And as for the enemy AI, it breaks. And it breaks a lot. Oh, and you can also use a form of night vision through magic to reveal hidden pathways or collectible items, which is helpful, but perhaps even better, John has the ability to perform a matrix spin, which proceeds to completely skew John's perception of reality through a hilariously broken aiming mechanic. So there's that too. I guess it's better than watching his wrist snap in half due to the recoil. Or worse, you could end up like this guy. So yeah, this game is pretty much classic PS2 era third person shooter jank. But in spite of the bad shit, there are plenty of moments that entertain. John has the ability to straight up punk demons with a well aimed kick, which tickles to no end. And when boiled down to its most basic elements, the gameplay loop of shooty shooty bang bang demon time is fun in small doses. However, this is also arguably Constantine's biggest flaw. It is fun, but in small doses. For example, similar to Silent Hill, John can phase through to the hell version of his surroundings so that the player can then overcome or bypass an obstacle or collect a necessary item, and the first few times this happens is fucking cool. I actually really love the Constantine depiction of hell that pops up throughout the movie. Instead of recreating some seven circle Dante's Inferno gig, it's essentially a modernized version of the underworld, a burnt out husk of mankind's reliance on structured civilizations, cities and technology, yet always on fire with shit flying past you every five seconds and creepy crawlies threatening to tear you limb from limb. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to spend an eternity here. But it's also sadly the same for the game version. Once you've visited this place six or seven times, the charm really starts to wear off. 
It all looks very similar, lots of orange and brown, and oh my fucking god, look at that texture. I know this is 2005, and things weren't that stellar for visual design back then, but this is the kind of texture you would have seen released in 1995. And it's kind of odd, actually, because a lot of the cutscenes and general aesthetics of the game don't look all that bad. The cutscenes feature smooth interpretations of the character models, and alongside a decent Keanu Reeves impression offered by this guy, most of Constantine the video game looks and sounds alright. Oh, by the way, if you don't know who this is, allow me to jog your memory. Yeah, I read somewhere these are bad for your health. Alright. Now listen up. I want this thing to go smooth and by the numbers. You know how much I hate going there. I want DCS and tactical database assimilation by 0830. All right, Beeman. I'll get my feet wet, but you'd better be right. Now move it, people! Lieutenant Gorman, I fucking salute you. So I'm guessing that this review feels a little half-baked or just simply shorter than expected. And if that's the case, then yeah, I can't deny I don't have a whole lot else I want to say about this game. Once you've mastered the standard gameplay loop and gotten through 30 to 60% of its runtime, you've pretty much seen everything that Constantine can throw at you, minus some inoffensive boss monsters that I've mostly kept hidden for spoiler's sake, and an absolute train wreck of a final chapter, which I've also kept hidden for spoiler's sake. Although I suppose I should have seen it coming, considering the likely restrictions placed on the dev team. Ari, don't fucking spoil the end of the film, etc, etc. Fine, whatever, I'm not here for the story, and I'm guessing that this was the case for most other players. Instead, if you're going to play Constantine now, I'd suggest a switching off all memory of the film and play it for the entertainment value instead. Because it is with complete seriousness that I admit I don't at all regret my time spent with Constantine. Yeah, without spoiling it, the ending sucks, and I very nearly penned a two-page rant on how much I absolutely love the ending of the film compared to the shit show that this game offers, digging deep into the thematic and symbolic nuances while burning the game's final scenes to a stake, but I quickly realised there was literally no point in this. The game was never going to have a stellar story. It couldn't deviate from the film too much for obvious reasons, but it also couldn't match the film beat for beat either. It's an impossible situation, so screw it. Forget the story and just have fun. Once again, this is an Abandonware game, available to you for free if you're in the mood for a knockoff Max Payne-esque title with demons and spells and Keanu Reeves impersonations. And if that sounds like fun to you, go play this game! And if you like this video...